Hello and welcome. I'm Gohar Raza and you are watching Eureka. Human beings have asked certain fundamental questions repeatedly and scientists are notorious. They ask the question and give a different answer every time. As the science progresses, the answers change. Very often, the questions don't. One of the questions has been, what is the unit of life? Now, the simple answer is, the unit of life is body. When the life is gone from the body, you are dead. But scientists were not satisfied with this answer. They came up with a different answer, that our body is composed of huge number of cells and that is the unit of life. No, they were again not satisfied with this answer. They probed and probed and probed and today they give you an answer that the unit of life is our helical beautiful structure called DNA. Today we are privileged to have a young brilliant scientist Dr. Sovik Maiti. Welcome to Eureka. Dr. Sauvik yeah. Maiti, before I go to your research, which is cutting edge, both technology and science that you are de dealing with, let's talk about your early life. It was hard for you or it wasn't to live in a small village of Midnapur where there was no science probably taught in the schools, where there was no facilities and it was pretty difficult. Your school was far off. Was it difficult? Uh, I don't think it is, you know, hard or, you know, it is hardship of my life because you cannot change your place of birth. You have to accept it. And I believe if you want to do something different, there is some environment within the environment which will help you to achieve your ambition. Yes, I brought up in a small village of Midnapur district in West Bengal, but I am very proud to be a village boy till today. <laughs> you know, whenever I get chance, I do not want to miss to inform that I am from a very small place which I mean that, you know, if you want to grow in your life, place where you have born doesn't matter at all. It is not only me. There you are, can cross all the hurdles. Yeah, yeah. It is not only the, I am your the Your schools were closed down when it was sowing season, when it was uh, uh, reaping it, season, yeah, yeah. when there were floods, yeah. when there were so, calamities of all kinds uh, as far as education yeah, is concerned. The, 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 How did you do yeah, it? The part where I belong to Moena, okay. it was in you know, a very floody area. Each and every rainy season, you know, uh, roads are under water. So, officially school are not closed, but unofficially you can go, you cannot go. Even matter. today that happens? I, I don't know, last, you know, 10, 15 years. I don't think so because it has improved, definitely, you know, it has improved. So, uh, there is no pressure of education, more or less in the harvest time, you know, most of us, not me, I was a little bit lucky in that way, most of our school friends, they are involved to farming and helping their parents, even when they are maybe, I can remember fourth standard, fifth standard, that kids who You went have, to the fields and helped your parents yeah, yeah. to bring so, things So, that is our priority in the, in the harvesting uh, time education or going to school is not priority. You have to go in the morning, help your parents and other people in the family who are, you know, trying to farming, then come back in the right time, 9 o'clock, have bath, have your lunch, you know, go to school, 6 hours. This was again far off. Yeah, again far off. Then come back, again you concentrate little bit on farming, then you go for a study, do some homework. So, it is not 
a pressure that you have to go to school, you have to study regularly. It was not a not priority. A priorities. Education but was my not. my parents, my father is a teacher, was a teacher, he is a retired teacher. Somehow he has a pride for education. Okay. He, though he was a school teacher, he was a PhD in literature and he got his PhD maybe 1970s, that time it was a very rare case. Say, in an alternative way, he has taken a research as a hobby or passion. So, in my home, there was an environment, environment for education yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, I used to take excellence pride. Excellence was, was the, the, the uh, objective yeah. of your father that got inculcated in your Yeah, uh, father, my, I will tell my maternal grandfather, who is also was a teacher. You know, whenever I used to meet him, you know, he used to encourage me study. You know, among family, somehow I was a little bit, you know, so-called uh, loved one, and loved privileged one, and, one. You know, yeah, good <laughs> in education. It. Okay, everybody used to like it, so everybody used to encourage me in that way. Okay, you are good in study, you should concentrate, and whatever encouragement you know they, you know love to give me they used to give me and that did you also have to 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 sell vegetables etc uh, yeah as, yeah as a child yeah as a child you know uh, uh, to support your parents so we have a you know few acres land so we used to grow vegetables at different time so if it is extra what do you do you go and sell in the market Okay, and get extra money and which will help your parents. Generally in that environment, students run away from science. Most of them. They develop a phobia yeah. towards mathematics and science. When did you get interest in uh, yes. so, uh, science? You know, in village where from I am, if you score well in 10th standard, you take science in 12th standard, 10 plus 2. If you are good in science, you appear for joint entrance for engineering and medical. Correct. Okay. That is the normal route. Normal. I followed the normal way. So, I could not, you know. You were good in science, so you followed. Yeah, I followed. Okay. It was like yeah, there water no, flowing, yeah, yeah, water flowing in a yeah. canal. Yeah. So, you can, you know, parents are happy. I am going to a good college, you know, in a, in a good And you landed up in Midna, uh, in, in Jadavpur, Jadavpur University. University. Yeah, very easily. <laughs> I, I didn't suffer to land landed there. Okay, so you didn't have to struggle. Yeah, no struggle. You know, it, it was part of life. Part of life. You know, and you know. And you didn't realize that, that how it, important it how was. How important it was. You know, that time I I can remember that you know for presidency college, one of the important you know very well known college. So I I appeared for a written test in presidency college for physics. I you know got shortlisted. Then I, uh, I, I appeared for an interview in Narendrapur College for Economics. I got shortlisted. In Jadavpur University, Physics, Chemistry, all the stream, I have been shortlisted. So, somehow it was in my mind that if you want to study in Chemistry, go to Jadavpur University. <laughs> if you want to study Physics, go to Presidency College. If and you, you were inclined to, to study Chemistry right from the beginning. We will come back. I have to take a short break. We'll come back soon. Welcome back to Eureka. We were discussing with Dr. Maiti that how he landed up in Jadapur University and he did not realize what he has done in life because this was the door to higher education yeah. and best of the higher education probably. Yeah. In, in, in Do you remember Jadavpur University and teachers there and how did you yeah, very much. get educated and I am in chemistry? Still, still you know, in touch with several teachers of my department, those who are still there, not got retired, even with some retired you know, professors. So, here you developed your interest in chemistry, yeah. you polished your chemistry, but then suddenly you switched over to biotechnology and bio areas. and. Uh, land up in Hyderabad, which must have been a cultural shock. Uh, no, uh, I, I started to work on biology in my first postdoc in Hyderabad. Also, I did chemistry. Mm -hmm. The My research problem was to synthesize polymer. I am a polymer chemist. Polymer chemist. Okay. And uh, it is a chemistry basically. 
So different type of founder of CSIR, S. S. Bhatnagar, Dr. S. S. Bhatnagar was also a polymer, polymer chemist. chemist. Yeah, yeah. So you know different type of polymer, water soluble polymer, which can modify the viscosity of any solvent. Mm -hmm. And the application of this polymer is such a way that you know, say you have a paints. Okay, depending on the roughness of the surface where you are putting your paints. You have to modulate the viscosity of the paint. If it is a very smooth surface, you have yeah. very thin paint. And if you have a rough surface, you need a much thicker layer of paint. Yeah. Okay. So that paint's composition, the color are same, but you have to change the viscosity. So you can add polymer of different architecture to fine tune the viscosity the way you want. So, my research problem, part of the research problem was, you know, synthesize. So, from synthesis of this kind, which is pure physical chemistry, you graduated to entering into cutting edge science yeah. of, the, of, of the time. How did that transformation so, uh, take uh, place? No, if I ask myself, what I would like to do, I am a person who cannot continue the same thing for more than five years. <laughs> okay. So, every five years you ask a I, I basic try to, question. Yeah, yeah, try, to, I try to shift from one subject. It, it's, sometimes it is good, sometimes it is a matter of debate. But basic thing what I do is physical chemistry. Try to understand the physical properties of any material. It could be polymeric material, it could be chemical polymeric material. It could be biological polymeric. How material. did you switch over to DNA? Okay. And RNA. So somehow I have some, you know, uh, you know, in, in inclination for uh, biology. Okay. I tried to join biological research problem after my MSc, but somehow I could not impress your teachers, of <laughs> professor of my choice. Okay. There could be some different professor who could have taken me, but I wanted to do you know PhD with a particular professor. So, I approached them, they did not that time show any interest to take chemistry student. So, during my application of postdoc, I thought it is another opportunity I can switch. So, I wrote to a professor in University of Nebraska Medical College. So, initially also he was not that much willing to accept me. It was my first postdoctoral application. Then I communicated with him through email and convinced him that it is good for you as well as for me if we work to together. Work on the problem and work together. Yeah, I bring some new physical chemistry knowledge to your lab and I can learn something new from you and we can blend our knowledge such a way that a new thing can be done. And that was the turning point. That was life. the turning point. Okay, after two years of uh, you know Nebraska Medical Center stay, then I moved to another field. Was it a cultural uh, shock for you when you landed up in the United States yeah. of America and yeah. how different it was? Yeah, definitely. There are huge cultural change as I think I have mentioned you. you know, I did not study English up to my fourth standard. Yeah. Everybody knows, you know, in a, in a uh, communist time, they have, you know, eliminated English from the from, course, from the primary course. And somehow in a village, you know, you do not have opportunity to read English newspaper, to listen in English channel, even in radio. So communication was in English big, was a major problem yeah, for major, you. Major, major problem. And again, landed up in your even United today States. I have that problem. I, I I should acknowledge it. Yeah, because of I have missed something in my childhood. So that was my first problem. You know, I go to solve. You know, as you might know much better than me you end up some type of English, you are really do not understand <laughs> what they are speaking. You know, some kind of, you know. They do not understand what you are saying yeah, and you do not understand yeah. what they are this saying. This is first cultural problem to understand what they are trying to communicate. The second, within few days, I see that, you know, whole environment is very monotonous, very routine, very programmed. Okay. And you didn't like it. I don't like it. You know, you you, you like not, India's variety. Yeah. You you want to go the somewhere. Yeah. You go north, 
that many blocks south, that many blocks, you will reach your destiny. Everything in block when you are trying to locate your address. In India, you are sometime lost and you… And then you ask people. <laughs> yeah. You <laughs> there ask, you, you don't ask. Yeah. You know, so… I, I but then suddenly from English, which was difficult for you at that time, you go to France um, where it's more difficult. It, no, it is <laughs> much easier, I can tell you. You know, they do not, not, they do not know English. I also cannot <laughs> communicate in English. So we evolved a common language, you know. <laughs> French also are not good and they, they don't, don't bother. And most, even I will tell that, you know, in America, they never look down me that I am not a good communicator. I can tell you another example. My postdoc professor suddenly asked me, can you go and teach spectroscopy in the master degree of my university in, on behalf of him? And initially I was very nervous. Then I took few courses. And there, student used to give feedback whether you want back this professor or teacher or not. And I was surprised, you know, there are many Americans, they want me to teach their course. And second year, based on their feedback, I got another opportunity to teach them. That so means when English was in, not a problem. Yeah, when you are in Europe or maybe America, then you are never looked down upon because you don't know their language. Yes, yes you never. You don't know English. I was, you know. It is more of a question whether you know science or not. Yeah. And if you know science, yeah. you are valued. Yeah. I, I'll have to take a break at the moment. We'll come back soon. The discussion continues. Welcome back to Eureka. Dr. Maiti, you have been to best of the institutes in US and Europe. Do you feel that IGIB where you are working at the moment does research at par with these institutions? I are we as good as any institute in the world? I will tell some extent we are better than other institute at least I have spent. We have high class, world class facilities. In IGIB, we have, you know, very energetic environment. We are young, we have further young scientists. And it is a institute, the name itself tells, it is a integrative biology. Okay, it is very rare to... Institute of um, Integrative Biology. Yeah, Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology. So, yep. there is genomics part, there is a integrative part. And today, Biological science is a boundary less science. You need people from physics, you need pe people from scientists from chemistry, you need definitely biologists. Biologist. Okay. So, our institute has that environment. We have chemist, our director Dr. Rajesh Gokhale is chemist, people like me chemist, I have another colleague in my next door laboratory, Kausik also is a chemist. There are many biologists. Okay. So, environment wise, it is also good and I should give a little bit credit to my former director, Professor Brahmachari, which I tell to my other friends in different institute. You know, it is, if you establish a good institute, very talented people come and execute, it is a very, you know, well accepted that you have established a nice environment. But our institute is an institute where, you know, stu scientists who are not too much talented can come and do very excellent work. Dr. Omi Jahangir Bhabha always said that a good institute is an institute where average scientists can do yeah. good work. So, I will tell IJVAA institute, even an average scientist can do very good. So, you will recommend every a uh, young person who is interested in genomics to come to IGIB? I think so. I think so. I, they yeah. should come to Yeah, I IGIB. should not undermine other institute as well, but I think IGIB is one of the, you know. Best in the world. Best in the world. We have huge facilities. We have another resources which is not available to the rest of the world. The sample, human sample, mm. okay. We have the highest number of human sample 
in you know, which is, you know. You can experiment, you can yeah. do trial yeah. runs, yeah. you can do your research. Ask a good question and yep. you may have yeah. answer yeah. if you are working yeah. with IGIB. Yeah. You are working on a very specific problem which has implications for cancer to TB to uh, many other ailments including uh, sugar problem. Uh, when did you get interested in that? But that is a short question. What is it that you are trying to find out and ask? So, as you have started this program that you know, uh, there is a further unit of cell which is called DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. And Watson Creek already has established it has a double helix structure. And this is where the program of cell, what cell is going yeah. to do yeah. or, or going to be, yeah. uh, the program is uh, encoded in this yeah. Yeah. double helix. This is OL set rule, okay? but recently it has been observed there is a, some deviation and due to this deviation of the uh, rule of Watson Creek base pairing, you may land up with different other type of structure which is not normal double helix structure, we call it alternative structure. It could be from a single strand, it could be from double strand, it could be three strand together we call triplex, even four strand together we call quadruplex. And these are all alternative DNA secondary structure, nowadays it is well established, it forms at the RNA level also. So, my basic question is whether this alternative structure forms inside of the cell or not, whether there, a, there is a… It is, uh, let me understand yeah. it properly, is it at the level of DNA that the decision is taken by the nature that the cell is going to grow into brain cell or a skin cell or your lung cell or heart cell, these are different cells. Yeah. So, is it at the level of DNA and how is that taken? How, how does the nature take decision or program it? Yeah, so everything definitely all the biological information is lying at the DNA level. DNA level. Okay. And from DNA we get RNA and from RNA we get protein. Okay. All the decision is not taken by a particular part of this system, neither DNA, not RNA, not the protein. You need a kind of machinery okay, or interacting partner, they interact. And, and then the decision yeah, is taken. Generate a signal, that signal tells which path cell has to take. Right. So, okay. It is an assemble of biological parts together to generate this signal. Now, they, everywhere there is a recognition, partners a protein. It is a very complex Very structure. complex system. And if something goes yeah. wrong, the cell is going to go wrong. Wrong. Yeah. It will not be yeah. a normal yeah. brain cell or a normal heart cell or, or a normal skin cell. Skin cell, yeah. So, you know. What is the question that you asked? I asked the question, the structure at the DNA level has any role to recognize their partner or not. If it has a role, how it recognize? Now, if this structure does not happen to form, what problem happens within the cell? If I can establish is yes, there is a problem, then I try to manipulate this structure. And you can intervene. Intervene. So, you yeah. are also trying to uh, maybe invent certain molecules which can go there yeah. and set things right yeah. so that uh, the, the uh, cancerous growth does not yeah. take place yeah. or mal uh, functioning does not yeah. happen. Yeah. And this has brought you this year's Bhatnagar Award, yeah. if I understand correctly. Yeah. yeah, one of this, you know, I have two, you know, contribution, I will not tell discover it, contribution in this field. One is this kind of alternative DNA structure, which you know we have established that they have certain role and you 
can design specialized molecule to target them and intervene the biological outcome. Second is there is a small piece of nucleic acid RNA label we call micro RNA. Again you can design small molecule you know to, to interact with to it. To interact with it. So, two different you know it is linked to drug. Are you level. happy? When did you come to know that you have got Bhatnagar award? Yes, definitely. It is the biggest award in the country yeah, for any uh, science. Definitely uh, I was happy till today I am happy. I will tell yeah. I am over But health. you are habitual of getting awards in such a small short period of time of research, you have got lots of awards. Does uh, these awards when they come your way, uh, you, they definitely make you happy I am sure, but uh, does it also help you excite you enough to do more research or you are doing research I, because there is an exciting to, to question. To me, you know, I will tell that, you know, getting all these awards, definitely I am happy, I am overwhelmed, but not over excited. I always feel more burdened. And excited uh, about the question, scientific questions? No, I have to prove again that I am worth for this. So, it, it it's for me, it is a more responsibility. It is a bigger responsibility bigger resp every time you get an award. Yes. Uh, what I would like to ask you in the end is, do you have a message for still younger generation? You are yourself so young. Yeah, I have definitely. As I mentioned, tomorrow science is boundary less science. Okay? And any problem you pick up, it is very difficult to solve by single individual. And you need to build your team, your collaborator. So, collaborative research is the key the of future. future, at least in biology. That, that much I can tell. You need chemist, you need physicist, you need biologist, you need different type of biologist, you need different type of chemist. The boundaries are fading away are fading and away. the younger generation yeah. has we to We should be prepared that. to accept it. When I was studying or practicing P, you know, chemistry in my PhD time, you know, people who was reluctant to even talk about biological problem. Okay. Chemists used to synthesize their molecule and biologists used to do their own. There is no cross talk each other. But today we need to integrate, integrate. cross these yeah. boundaries yeah. and move ahead. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Maiti. Thank you very to much. To spare so much of time. May I on your behalf, um, Promise our viewers that if they have any question, then you will sure. be happy to answer. Sure, sure. Please do write to us if you have any question related to Dr. Maiti's area of research. If you have any question, do write to us at eurekarstv at gmail.com. We will come back next week with a brilliant scientist. Keep watching Eureka.